today we have something quite different. We are going to paint these lemons. So my son uh, had decided that he really wanted to do a market stall in our local town and he wants to sell lemonade. And I thought if he's going to have a stall selling lemonade, we'll need some paintings of lemons. So we got together and we started painting some lemons. And then I realized how enjoyable and soothing and uh, fun they were. I think when you paint in one subject for a long, long time, there is this pressure inside that, you know, pushes you or pushes me to like get better each time. And it's just that strange pressure. And I was starting to get a little bit tired. So it's really nice to change up your subject once in a while. And fruit is really fun to paint. I mean, it's, it's still nature. It's still uh, simple. So if you're interested to see how I go about this, uh, let's start painting. So for this lemon painting, I am using a 9x12 Saunders & Waterford 100% cotton um, paper, 300 GSM cold press. And that's the paper I usually use. The paint sets, I'm, the paint I'm using is a bunch of different brands and all of that can be found in the description below. I'm just wetting down my paints. Um, and also the brush that I'm using today is a size 12 round uh, Christy Rice brush. So Christy Rice, if you don't know her, she has an amazing YouTube channel and she's also got really cool products. And this is her size 12 round, but use any round brush that you have at home. You don't have to use this one. I just like this brush lately because I feel like the point is really pointy. It holds a lot of water and it's nice and stiff. So I'm starting firstly with the leaves. I grabbed some of my sap green and I added a bit of gold. I think it was like a, 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 a gold, I think it's a nickel gold. I have a couple of different kind of goldish colors. So just, just working on the first couple of leaves. I do have a reference photo that I'm working off and I think it's just something from Pinterest. But go to Pinterest, Google, uh, search for lemons and you'll find so many beautiful lemon photographs that you can copy from uh, or just follow the ones that I'm doing right now. So I'm working on the leaves and as you know, uh, I think I've just decided to start on the leaves because they are the familiar subject to me. Um, leaves are sort of my comfort zone because I paint flowers usually and that's what you should do. Just, just sort of like use your intuition to start painting what feels uh, safe and, and fun for you at the moment. So just going around the page and this will be a tray of lemons. So I'm just spreading the different leaves around and you know varying the value of the leaves, uh, some darker, some lighter. So I just went to grab a bit of the darker green there. And I'm like, okay, so I've got enough leaves going for now. I'm going to try and put down the first lemon. So uh, for lemon, I use lemon yellow, obviously. <laughs> use any yellow that you have because you know um, that lemons come in totally a thousand variation in hues of yellow. Some more yellow ochre some more bright and warm. So I oh, then I just went into my gamboge, which is a very, very dark, warm um, yellow so that I could create a bit of that shade. And then I'm just fixing the shape of the lemon there. So fruit is really, really fun to do wet on wet. I don't know if you've tried other fruits like watermelon and mango, bananas. Um, they're just so much fun to play with in watercolor. And so are lemons. So basically while it's wet, you can really play with the different, you can drop in different colors uh, for shadows. And sometimes I also like to drop in a bit of green into my lemons. I think I'll do... I'll do one of, I'll do some of that in the other lemon. So this one, I've chosen a very much darker yellow. I think I went for cadmium with gamboge mixed together. And then I decided to just lift a bit of uh, color from the top lemon and to create a bit of highlight. So just play around. You can either leave a complete white spot there for a bit of uh, like, you know, the light hitting the fruit, or you can do what I'm doing now, which is dabbing the color off my brush and just um, uh, lifting some color for highlight. So what I'm doing now is I am dropping some uh, burnt umber into the left side of that lemon to create a bit of shadow. 
and this is all done while everything's still wet so you can get really nice blends and how much pigment and how much water to to put in you have to figure that all by yourself you have to make mistakes you you basically want to um depending on the effect you want some people love to have lots of blooms and accidents and happy accidents and then just go, go crazy with the water but if you want to be a bit more controlled then yeah then be more controlled with the water right so um, that's a bit awkward of an awkward corner that I'm squeezing one more lemon in there, but um, just giving that a go and just having fun. So this is real time at this point, all right? So as you know, if you follow me on my channel, uh, a lot of people, a lot of you say that I paint really fast. So feel free to watch this back on uh, a slower speed. There is a function on YouTube where you can just um, do that. So you see what I've done. I've actually created the outline of the lemon and then I'm coloring it in. And I mean, you know, there's no hard and fast rule about that. But if you have good quality, 100% cotton, even though a uh, paper, yeah, even though you, 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 you paint the outline, the outline is not going to show when you blend it in enough. So I've decided to add a bit of green now and I'm dropping a bit of green into the lemons because you know some lemons have a tinge of green, the ones that are not so ripe yet so that's a nice, very very cool fun thing to do. And just playing and dabbing in all the different colours. So I'm really kind of using um, lemon yellow, gamboge, cadmium yellow and burnt umber for my all my lemons you know. I mean, you can try and put in different colors if you like, but I'm just going to uh, kind of work with these so I don't have too crazy of a lemon situation going around. Uh, I apologize that sometimes my hands are blocking the painting. Um, I'm using just one camera for these videos now. And this one here, as you can see, is a cross section of a lemon that I am attempting. I say attempt because I don't, recall the last time that I painted a lemon. Um, I think I did try some lemon tutorials uh, right at the start of uh, my first year of my painting and I really enjoyed them but ever since I actually have not painted fruit or lemons so I am really kind of going by what I see and what I think I should do. So I just created the outline of that cross section and then just filling in colors where I think I should fill in and leaving highlights where it looks like it's lighter color. Dropping in green, dropping in burnt umber into the middle and yeah, just sort of like figuring it out slowly, slowly. I'm leaving that whole white space there uh, but I don't leave it white completely so I, I will go in later on for a little glaze, but I'm just leaving it for now. All right, so just working my way around the page and adding more and more lemons. I have shown you how I did those few lemons and I think right now I'm just gonna speed up the rest of um, this first lemon layer because it's kind of like the same thing and uh, you're welcome to slow it down to watch it as you paint but otherwise it's going to be same thing and if I don't this video will be extremely long so I'm just going to leave you with some really relaxing music and I'm just going to speed up the rest of this first layer just by twice so what you see is just going to be two times of what I'm painting and then we'll come back and we'll work on the background and the tray but and, and the next layers but I'm gonna like stop talking for now and I'm gonna just leave you with some relaxing painting and music.
All right, now we are gonna work on just painting the tray. And I mixed up a burnt umber, a bit of yellow, I believe. And I'm just gonna eyeball it and go around the border to outline this tray. And of course you can be more precise and, and use a ruler or whatever, but I think the beauty of watercolor painting or the style that I like anyway, is more freehand, more uh, sort of like just, you know, hand painted. So I really, really enjoy just doing this process. And I, I do enjoy putting backgrounds to my watercolor a lot nowadays. I do it for my floral paintings. And I find it very relaxing and very uh, calming because it's just something that you can do without much thinking, right? You really can switch off the thinking brain and you're just focusing on the paint and just, it's like coloring it, coloring it in, coloring in, that's right, coloring in. So just going around um, those lemons and letting some of them stick out because uh, that just gives it a really nice sort of like 3D effect when you let some of it stick out. Yeah, and then just going around, not worrying so much about getting it right. Like I said, looking at my reference photo and I know that the, um, the outside of, there's a part of the tray which is darker so that's why I'm kind of like maybe just dropping a bit more pigment in. And I'm letting this one lemon stick out as well. Almost like it's sticking out of the tree. And seriously, you don't even have to worry so much about like making sure that the white borders are all even. I mean, you can make that effort too, but I realize that I don't and it's fine. So yeah, just going around and taking your time and not worrying too much about getting it perfect, all right? It's just creating a nice border barrier for yourself. All right, in the next part of the video, I have sped it up about two and a half times because all I'm doing is just going around each lemon and just coloring the whole background with one wash and this can seem really scary and tricky at the start but as you practice um, you know you get more confident and um, it won't be as scary and if you use 100% cotton paper like I said you wouldn't experience that much difficulty in getting a smooth uh, blend and wash throughout the paintings if there are sections you can work on that would be even better. So basically you work in one section and you don't have to worry about blending every, every single part. But um, this painting actually doesn't have defined section. Everything's kind of linked. Okay, wait, yeah. So you see how the leaf stops there? So that's kind of like the end of one section. What I'm doing as well is I'm dropping in darker, more saturated uh, burnt umber in places where I know that there'll be a shadow. And I think this is what makes the painting really, really nice, uh, is when you create depth with, with doing that. And it's really, really fun and easy. So you just use, um, so I'm just using burnt umber and uh, with water and putting just darker, dripping, dropping some darker, that, there you go. See, I'm just dropping it underneath that lemon there. Um, there is also timing involved if you drop it in too much of it and too late, it could create blooms that you might not like. But you know, this is all really trial and error and um, it, is, it is part of the learning and fun. Really, really fun, like really fun. Like I'm doing this voiceover now, um, maybe almost two weeks after the actual video and what I'm watching it Watching myself do it makes me feel like I want to do it more. I want to do it again. Uh, I have this very, very short attention span when it comes to painting stuff. Like I like to explore one thing, maybe three, 
three or four paintings max and then I'm moving on. If you follow me on Instagram, um, you know that I cannot paint too many things in a series because I just I just lose I just lose interest and I want to move on and explore new things. So the lemon phase lasted three paintings. <laughs> only three this was the third one i believe and after that i moved on but now after watching it i'm watching it now and explaining to you my process has made me uh motivated me to do it again and i hope it motivates you and you see how fun it can be it's really fun creating shadows drawing the lemon there's just a lot of steps much more steps than i usually would do and that's totally fine I mean, why not, right? Like sometimes I just have more of a, what do you call, more of a stamina to paint and sit longer and wait for it to dry and coming back again, yada yada, and sometimes I don't. Um, I'm glad I, I recorded this process though and I'm sharing it with you here on YouTube. I don't know whether the algorithm will let me show all of you this because, you know, YouTube kind of likes uh, us to just stick to one thing and it's been flowers this whole time and this is I think the first non-flower painting anyway yeah that's the tray the first layer and I'm gonna wait for it to dry and come back with the I believe next layer so I am now going to work on the shadows for the lemons okay now the video is back to real time no, it doesn't seem like it, but it is real time now. And this is wet on dry. So my lemons are dry now and I'm going to place uh, shadows, which is a combination of different values, different strokes, making some lines thicker and stronger and some fatter and bigger. The whole process of layering shadows is an experiment that is personal to each and every one of us. I can't teach you to specifically, um, you know, put shadows in a certain way. It's, it's doing something, looking at your reference, figuring out, experimenting, and then you will know what you like and what you don't like and how much you want to layer. Um, people who are really into realistic painting can do this for a long, long time, glazing many, many layers. And uh, people like me who are not really into that will just do it briefly. So you'll see that I'm not going to do a ton of detail and layering. I mean, I could, but like I said, attention span, right? <laughs> I don't have the stamina or attention span for that. And that's not my joy. It's really not my joy. My joy is um, I want to enjoy painting so that I can keep coming back to it. If something becomes a chore, I know that I won't want to do it. And why, why would I want to do that to myself? So when we are exploring and learning what we like in painting, it's so important to just lean into your joy, lean into your, um, what makes you happy, what makes you uh, feel good. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at here and I think we need to wait for everything to dry before finally putting in the last layers. Okay, for this bit, I have sped it up again two times faster because I am just really going to work on refining the details. And the first thing I need to do is to give this tray a bit more definition. So I have mixed up some burnt umber and putting a bit of paint gray because I want to get a darker value of brown. And looking at my reference photo, there is the inside of the tray that is darker, shadowier bit. And yeah, just doing just that. Just going around the tray. And feel free to pause the video if you're following along, if you're painting along, because um, yeah, this is sped up for you. Bit of a... Sh shadow 
and blending. Just going by feel, playing with pigment and, and fading it out in areas. If you like um, the way I approach painting and you want to know more about the other stuff that I have to offer, I actually don't really have anything going on at the moment. But if you want to stay in touch with me, do sign up for my mailing list. I have a link in the description below. And um, as a gift for new signups, I have a free PDF I call Nine Secrets to Loose Florals, which is a little, uh, little ebook that I wrote, uh, which is really from my heart and from all the joy that I've discovered from painting loose florals and uh, yeah these secrets are techniques tips as well as you know uh, links to why they are joyful and why they are loose and intuitive and, and how they have um, benefited me my life my mental health my quality of life my self-esteem and confidence and I'd love to share a little bit of that with you so go and sign up for my mailing list if you haven't already I promise you I will not be bombarding you with lots of emails I normally send once a fortnight I can't I don't have time to do more than that anyway um, but yeah I'd love to get more connected with you in that space so as you can see I love that it's sped up actually it just feels like oh just putting some dark paints, blending it out. Putting some dark paint and then using a little bit of water to blend it out. Um, this is, you know, venturing into definitely more realistic painting kind of territory. And yeah, sometimes I do have the urge to do something a little bit more that way. It's funny how my painting urges changes from being realistic and then very loose and then more realistic again. I think it's all about like, you know, the, the fluctuations we have. So I'm mixing in a dark, a dark green there. I'm using perylene green or shadow green, or you can just mix up any green you have with a bit of uh, red or purple or dark blue. And I'm just accenting some of the leaves there with a bit of darker green. So creating a bit of shadows underneath each of the, some of the leaves on the side of the leaves just giving everything a bit more definition and if you want to like think about your light source and where the light's coming in from and all that you're totally welcome to generally there's a light source happening at the top right hand corner so that's where all my shadows are in the bottom left so I'm trying to generally follow that but um I don't I don't need to follow it to a T anyway. Okay. Last but not least, I am going to paint in the uh, the lines, the dark lines that are in the tray. So this tray is made out of wood. So I made of different um, different slabs of wood. So I was going to just paint the dark shadows to separate each slab of timber of wood and you know what this is the first time i'm painting anything like this lemon on trays when i do a lot of these paintings for you i usually am not putting on a performance and not trying to teach you something that i have been doing for a long long time myself or anything like that it's a lot of times me just figuring it out as I go and I'm making a video recording of it and sharing my process and I hope that encourages you to also know that what you paint for the first time can look very beautiful and you might not see it you might not think it's beautiful in your eyes because we all tend to be over critical of our work um, but more likely than not a lot of us paint and no one can see the mistakes. Everybody chooses to see the beauty and I, 
choose to think that this painting is quite beautiful because I've attempted certain things like shadows, I've attempted to get the dark and lights, I attempted some, some uh, veins and details, and I'm pretty proud of how this painting has turned out. If you have painted along with me, I really want to I really want to have a look. Find me on Instagram. I'm at Crystal Tan. Uh, tag me on your painting. I'd love to have a look and comment and see how you are with that. And then with that said, I think I'm pretty much done here with this lemon painting in a tray. There you have it, the lemons in this beautiful, simple brown tray. I hope you found the tutorial simple, easy to follow and not so intimidating. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do and sign up to my mailing list. Um, I'd love to connect with you a little bit more. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.